Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of our BDPA Tech and Career Talks. I am your Tech and Career Talk leader, Devin Jenkins. I currently reside in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I am a, a USCAN IT leader for our commercial teams uh, at GE Healthcare and also the founder and CEO of Share the Vibes LLC. I'm so excited to have you all with us here today. Uh, this is our first Tech and Career Talk post BDPA Con 2024. Uh, so um, if you were not in Atlanta, you absolutely missed a treat. Uh, we had a wonderful conference this year uh, with speakers um, all over the place. We had the um, ah, man, the the head of national security. I want to say I might be messing up the the head of cybersecurity uh, within our intelligence community. Um, I, I don't want to start throwing out too many titles. So I might throw the wrong one out. <laughs> the government has a lot of them, uh, but he leads up cybersecurity. Uh, for our uh, Office of National Intelligence. So uh, we had him at the conference of so speakers from Intel and NASA in the house, uh, conversations around AI. We had entrepreneurs there. Our youth did their thing as usual. So phenomenal conference. Now make sure you're in our mailing list and you're following the YouTube channel and seeing all the content that came out from that because it was an amazing experience. So we're looking forward to our 50th anniversary next year in Atlanta I'm in August back at the Western Peachtree Plaza. So make plans, not clear your calendars. We're going to have an amazing time next year. Uh, but for those who may be unfamiliar with BDPA and our Tech and Career Talks, I always like to give a little bit of context as we kick off the conversation. Uh, so BDPA, Black Data Processing Associates, I was established in 1975 in Philadelphia uh, as an organization focused on developing the African-American talent pipeline in the IT technology industry. Uh, so we have a focus around youth, um, building up computer programming skills, professional development, technology, acumen among middle and high school students, uh, but also serving as a forum for uh, collegiate students to continue to develop and professionals in the field uh, to build their skills, grow their networks, and continue to advance careers from the classroom to the boardroom. So that's BDPA. Um, our tech and career talks take place second and fourth Friday of each month. Uh, with the exception of August, uh, we usually take a break in August due to the conference. Um, and then we have special times throughout the year where we may not meet. But for the most part, second and fourth Fridays, uh, we're here from 1130 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Eastern time uh, with a range of speakers speaking on different topics. Some are more soft skill related, um, some are more hard skills. So we try to give you a range of topics um, and themes that are relevant to anyone at any point in your career so everyone can get value out of our conversations. Uh, we do record these and put them on YouTube. So if you are watching on YouTube, thank you. Uh, click like, subscribe, share, comment, click the bell so you know we post all the influential stuff you're supposed to do. Um, so share this with a friend um, and pass this along to someone who can use this information because BDPA is here to give you value. You make us valuable when we add value to you. So thank you for joining us today. Excited to have you with us. With us. Um, I'm going to get out of the way and let our esteemed speaker for the day, uh, Ms. Chantel Knock, introduce herself, her company, um, and get into today's topic around how we can make sure we're giving our youth the right exposure um, and education to keep them relevant and current as technology continues to evolve. So Chantel, I give you the floor. Awesome. Thank you, Devin. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, this, um, I was going to say this evening, but it's still morning this morning. Thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen real quickly and we're going to jump right into it. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Just want to make sure before I start talking. All right. So just a little bit about who I am. I am the founder of Empower With Words Educational Services. And we are a college and career planning company. And just a little bit of background of who I am now really quickly, I promise I did not make this picture as large. Um, one of my interns did these, these slides for me. So just a little bit about who I am. I'm the founder of this organization. I have been an education coach for over 10 years. And the goal really is, is to help students whether they're in high school, whether they're in college, but to really help students navigate various processes in their uh, education as well as their career. Um, I have a undergraduate degree, I think back maybe about almost 20 years ago, the big thing was not tech, it was getting into the medical field. 
So my mindset was I need to get into the, the med field. So I majored in biology pre-med. However, life had a different um, a path for me. And I, I master, had a, um, went to school, back to school for a master's in public health and been in the social behavior and mental health space for the last 15 years, but also working with students. Now, just a little bit about who we are. Now, I'm not going to read all this to you, but I want to highlight the most important things of why we do what we do. At on um, our organization, our team, we really believe that students should be empowered and support it through various processes, education and career. And what we do is we really try to provide strategies and tools through transitions, transitions from high school to college, college to the workforce, and even the workforce to entrepreneurship, if that's what they desire, but really providing those key things to help them get to that next level. Just a little overview of our programs before we get into the content today is just that we provide uh, private coaching for students where we really individualize our, our process for the student because every situation, every student is needs. So we really try to tailor it based upon their, their interests, their background and so forth. We also do group workshops and webinars such as this. Um, on various topics and I get into a little more details about the topics that we go over and we have a program called the three step prep and it's basically a curriculum that we go through that students can learn more about college college prep or, or should I say there's a curriculum where we focus on the college application process uh, essay writing scholarships and so forth and then for our workforce series we have a curriculum where we're helping students that may not desire to go into college but they may be interested in getting certifications and getting directly um uh getting directly into the workforce so we really try to um help students in all capacities and then we also have a entrepreneurship series as well and before the pandemic we used to do college tours really providing students exposure opportunities on uh, for to see various campuses should I say HBCUs PWIs private public universities to really give them an opportunity to connect with students and to connect with administrations um, to, to ask their specific questions about the, the university. Now a little bit about our services we as I stated we focus on exploring career interests. I know for me, I had a bit of a zigzag um, going, you know, going into school, trying to figure out what I want to do. But I know, you know, really right now working with some students, it really is helping them tap into their interests, their career interests. And then also teaching those soft skills, as Devin said, time management skills, goal setting, you know, um, also working with helping them with interviewing skills, public speaking, and also, you know, resume solutions and, and really helping them um, with essay writing and so forth. So this is just an overview of some of the services that we focus on the individualized as well as a generalized basis when working with our students. And we partner with so many different industries and, and community-based organizations, schools, nonprofits, churches, and so forth. Basically, anyone that value education and serve the youth. All right, so let's get into it. Now, one of the things that I love to do, I know we are all in meetings, back-to-back -back meetings over and over throughout the day, and I don't want to just talk to you, right? I want this to be engaging, and I want, you know, I want you to ask questions. I want you to also talk to uh, talk back to me as I talk to you. So this this morning, what we're going to talk about is the tech shifts and trends that we see right on a con con continuous basis. And then what I am going to share with you, I'm going to share with you four strategies to assist the young people that you work with in succeeding through technology shifts. And then what we're going to also talk about is why is this important? Why are these strategies important as we continue to see the shifts and the transitions in the technology space? Okay, what are tech shifts that you have experienced? So anyone, if you want to 
put uh, uh, if you want to give me an example, you can say it now, or if you want to put it in the chat, please feel free. What are some of the shifts that you have seen um, in your everyday life? Anybody care to share? Now I know you. I know everyone uses tech on a regular basis. Okay, I see. AI, yes. Gamification, yes. Any other? Any other shifts you've seen? All right, let's talk about those trends. Yes, direct deposit, yes. Now let's let's talk about it. Voice activated technology. By show of hands, how many of you have Alexa, Google? Um, you have some of you have Siri on your phone. Those are examples of voice activated technology, right? It makes us, it, it, it's convenient. You don't necessarily have to touch a device. All you can do is say what it is that you want. And then that particular technology will, um, you know, do the task that you desire, whether it's playing music, whether it's creating a checklist or whatever it may be. Also, autonomous vehicles. I don't necessarily have this, but we've seen it. We've seen it in the agricultural uh, field with biotechnology, where farmers are utilizing more uh, biotech when they are, um, you know, doing crops or trying to increase their business and so forth. We've seen it in the metaverse for training. I've actually worked with, I did a shot with the individual. She had a background in engineering, but she was also a tutor. And one of the things that she uh, heard, well, actually what she demonstrated to me in the workshop was how she transformed her tutoring company. And it's no longer, I'm, I'm gonna say this, and I think we can, we, can, we can all agree on this, where you, know, you have to keep kids in, engaged and the best thing to do is with uh, technology, right? Game systems. And what she created was a metaverse to, to tutor. And this is an opportunity where she allowed the students to create their own avatar, um, their own background and all those things. But in the metaverse, she's teaching various subjects, um, elementary level, middle school level, high school, and even college students. And this is an opportunity to keep the kids engaged, but also having them are also teaching the skills that they need um, to be taught. So that is also another shift that we have seen within technology. Also AI generated content, right? We have chat GPT. I mean, that's a big thing nowadays. Uh, AI is, you know, something that I think a lot of people are using. It makes it things a little more efficient. It makes things um, a little more fast. And then also uh, with neuromorphic computing, which is basically um, a method of computer engineering, which is an element of a computer model after a human brain, so in a human nervous system. Pretty impressive, all the things that we see in, in the tech space. So those are just a couple of examples that we see in within technology and some of the shifts and trends and even some of the things that we do um, on a regular uh, basis. Okay. So this is what I want from you guys, okay? I don't know if you can put yourself um, or unmute yourself, but I, again, I love engagement. So I want you to say strategy one, and then I'm gonna tell you what that strategy is. Again, I, I want you guys to talk back to me. So if you can unmute, I want you to say after, when, whenever I show you a strategy, I actually want you to say strategy one, strategy two. Can anybody unmute themselves? I know people may be working or maybe driving or some sort, but if you can, I want you to say strategy one. Strategy okay. one. Awesome, awesome. Let's try that one more time. You say? Strategy, strategy one. one. Expose and teach information on digital literacy. It is very important that we, as individuals that work with youth, provide the youth with many opportunities in, in learning, right? Whether it's from an individual standpoint or a group setting. And this could be in a form of teaching them how to code or how to program. Now, technology is not necessarily my expertise, but I work with students from a holistic standpoint. 
So again, if you if you are in that technology space, finding ways where you can teach and expose dig digital literacy. Now, again, it could be coding, it could be programming, or it could be teaching the kids how to understand cybersecurity. Now, even though my expertise is not in technology, actually yesterday I was on a webinar um, all about computer uh, um, cybersecurity, cybersecurity. And in the webinar, they were giving um, so many different uh, details about the need for this particular industry. And there, I believe, I think the instructor said is about 115,000 entry level jobs that the government um, is, 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 has available. And the big thing is, is just getting certified, getting students certified. I don't believe some of them, you really don't need a, a bachelor's degree. And this is something too, that if you know, if at the end, if you want more information about that, I can share that the upcoming webinar. But again, uh, this is another opportunity for students where they can get certified and get more um, experience um, when it comes to cybersecurity. But again, teaching them the, the importance of literacy, right? Awareness of online safety. And this is very important, especially for our younger audiences and understanding the basis of how to protect their personal information. I believe we see a lot of scamming going on. Um, so it really is important to, um, to teach them how to be safe, especially in, on the internet. And also teaching them tools to um, to make them to make them more efficient, right? So familiarizing themselves with software tools. I mean, these are software tools that you use um, in a job setting and so forth. Whether it's word processing, spreadsheets, um, presentation tools, etc. So again, teaching them various tools and in, in, in uh, resources when it comes to digital literacy. All right, you say. When I say something, now I want you to say strategy two. Let's let's try this again. You say strategy two. Awesome. Cultivate critical thinking skills. This is extremely important when we talk about the technology space. One of the things that I believe we all have to do is be intentional about critical thinking. We live in a world where all you have to do is pick up your phone or pick up your computer and Google whatever you want and the information is present. And that is also, it's good, but it also helps, or should I say decreases the level of thinking, right? One of the things that I encourage individuals when they're working with students is to teach them that everything on online is not accurate. I mean, we see that with social media, but teaching them that everything is not accurate teaching them how to evaluate the sources, how to think critically, how to distinguish what is a reliable source and what is misinformation. One of the things that I grew up on is learning how to do research, right? Learning how to do research from a textbook, writing it out and so forth. And that's one of the things that we still want to teach individuals to teach our, our youth is how to cross-reference, how to research, how to problem solve. And you know, problem solving skills and strategies, I think that is something that a lot of the young people are struggling with now. Um, you know, and this is a basic skill, but how do we navigate various, um, you know, various situations, right? Teaching them how to utilize their own intelligence and work through and solve problems. And this could be, again, from a personal standpoint, and even from a professional standpoint. All right, strategy three, you say, You can unmute yourself. Three. Awesome. Now, teach soft skills and strategies to balance tech. And one of the things that my organization focuses on, it's really focused, especially from the workforce standpoint in our program, is teaching soft skills. As I stated, we are not an expert in any field. But what we do is we really try to work from a holistic standpoint to help students prepare for that next level. So, for example, if it is going into the workforce, you know, there are certain skills that they have to acquire. 
Now, I don't necessarily have biological children, but I work with children on a regular basis, young people, teenagers, young adults, and so forth. How many of you work with children on a regular basis or even have children of your own, teens, children, and so forth? How many of you have that? And you can do it by a show of hands or in the chat. All right, okay, I see a few hands, perfect. Now, when we're talking about <laughs> working with a different generation, sometimes the communication is a bit different. Now I have two or actually three teenage nieces and, and it, the, the communication styles, they're different. And I have to constantly remind myself that I am not their parent, but I am a mentor, I am their auntie, and my job is to teach them skills to help them effectively communicate and engage in conversation with people versus an, an electronic or text message. Growing up in high school and college, I did what we called, um, I'm not I'm not sure if any in the anyone know um, or heard of forensics, which was a competitive public speaking organization. And one of the things that I learned, or should I say was a grain in my psyche was the importance of communication, whether it's from a delivery standpoint or whether it's from a content standpoint. But this was something that, again, I had to learn how to effectively communicate with individuals, which has definitely, uh, paid off as a as I became a professional. But one of the things that I encourage you to do when you're working with the youth is really to teach not only tech skills, but also teaching them how to communicate. And that communication is both written and verbal communication, especially for those individuals, those students that are more introverted, and then students who prefer to be um, behind the screen, th these are individuals that really, really have to work on commun communication skills. Another important reason of why we really want to teach soft skills is really to encourage collaboration and teamwork. And again, this is something that's very important when, you know, whether it's from an education standpoint or whether from a professional standpoint. You know, we want to begin to teach the youth how to collaborate. Right, whether you're young and even as professionals right now, this is a constant collaboration, whether you're working um, on a project, um, communicating with people on a team, it's necessary, right? This is very necessary, um, you know, when we are um, collaborating with others is to, to have effective communication skills. This is very important. And also emotional intelligence. I think we've seen that after the pandemic that a lot of people are struggling with emotional intelligence, how to understand and manage their emotions, right? How this, this is very important because again, everyone is different. Everyone handles diff things differently. Everyone process things differently. So being sympathetic, being empathetic, and also e being educated enough to express, professionally express yourself is very important. This is important in, in the workplace environment, in the school environment, and just building um, uh, relationships and, and a, a healthy dynamic within the workspace. So th these are just very important skills that a lot of youth and even ourselves as professionals have to remind ourselves um, when we are, are moving through this process. Okay, you say, Unmute yourself. Strategy four. Strategy four. Encourage lifelong learning. Learning does not stop after someone obtains a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a PhD certification. It does not matter. It does not stop. You know, it's very important to always encourage lifelong learning. It does not matter what phase you are in life. But this is something that we want to encourage all of our youth to do, whether it is obtaining or logging on to a um, workshop or webinar. As I stated, I had or have no experience in cybersecurity, but I know that I work with youth that are interested in that field. So why not 
get more knowledge in how to best serve my students and help um, push them or, or guide them through that particular industry. So again, it's very important to encourage lifelong learning. Again, it, it's whether it's from a perspective of um, getting more certifications for, um, for an advancement in your career or taking an online class, you know, to learn a little more skills about um, a specific topic and also for the youth and I work with students both in high school and undergraduate and graduate school, you know, with helping them find internships and volunteer opportunities. It really is important to gain those practical skills through those opportunities, through those internships, apprenticeships, or volunteer experience, and working with individuals within those related fields. You know, so encouraging your youth that you work with to, um, you know, to to seek out internships. So I see a hand, Robert. Do you have a question? Uh, yes. How do you go about uh, helping the students find those internships? Great question. So I think the best. So I think the the best way to go about that is. Um, really understanding where that student is. So if, for example, if that student is a college student, right, and they already have an idea on what industry and what career path they want to take, then you can tailor that research and finding, or, or should I say finding companies that, um, within that particular field. Or let's say it's a high school student who may not necessarily know specifically what field they want to get into. This is where we encourage volunteer experience um, to get those hands-on experience. So again, you can do uh, various researches in the, the community area that the student lives in, or state level that the student lives in, or even I believe some of the schools, high schools, offer or um, have dat databases where students can find internships opportunities. So, Did that answer your question? Um, actually, I was I was wondering how you go about finding the opportunities. I mean, do you just do a search on companies in the area, or are there particular kinds of companies that you look for? Uh, and do you actually find the internships and connect the students up with it, or do you give the students guidance for them of how to find those internships? So I do both. So it depends upon, again, from the individual coaching standpoint, um, it depends upon um, the specific need of that student. So I, my team and I, we actually do the research for the student. So if there is, because um, we do have partnerships with companies and, and, and individuals. So for example, um, living in the Northern Virginia area, I was able to connect with a lot of government workers. So for example, if there is a um, opportunity, let's say for the NIH or CDC or something like that, because my background is in the uh, med medical field. So for example, let's say, um, you know, there is an opportunity for students. So I will personally work with that student to help them get that internship or if there's a situation where that parent or that student or um, are, are able to do it independently, then I would just provide the resource to them. Does that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you very much. Sure, absolutely. Great question. Great question. And then also, um, you know, another example of encouraging lifelong learning is really encouraging students to work on personal projects. There are a lot of students that I'm working with right now in my internship program where they are taking or they are working with me from a personal perspective. And through that personal uh, project, I'm now being able to give them strategies to uh, help them in, in their professional. So it's more like mentorship. So really giving them projects that help them hone on their skills when it's time for them to transition to the workspace. So this is another thing that I encourage um, individuals when you're working with your students encourage them to take on personal projects and it helps with their resume building anything that they do whether it's from a paid perspective or a non-paid perspective it is something that they can outline on their resume so again it's very important to teach these skills because the more that you encourage them to attend um, certification uh, workshops or webinars or internships or even working on personal projects all of these things can be added on their resume to make themselves more marketable. All right, let's talk about why things are important. Why, why are these strategies important? 
And again, I feel like these strategies are important to me as a professional, as a business owner, because again, it does not matter what phase you're in on your life, whether you are a student, whether you have been in the career field, working for over 20 years, I feel that a lot of these strategies are important because again, it helps with our personal and professional development. Um, again, this is something that I'm constantly doing is continuous learning. One of, there was a phrase, I'm not sure if anyone's heard of this phrase, but I've, I've heard, I heard someone say this, they said that the most constant thing in life is change. Change. We see that throughout the shifts of technology. We see that in our day-to-day -day -day life. We see that in our workplace, change. And the most important thing it to, to, be, to, to do is to be prepared for that change, right? And, and what we want to do is make sure, again, as we continue to learn and grow, is that we're fostering a mindset of are we adaptable to those changes in those processes and that is what's most important is that we want to make sure that our young people are equipped to be able to adapt to change and to be able to handle those shifts that come whether from a personal perspective or whether from a professional perspective again why is there why is it important again to um, understand these strategies Again, we talked about this protection and privacy, right? We want to make sure our kids are protected. We want to make sure they're educated on literacy, whether, um, again, it's from a technology standpoint or whether it's from a personal standpoint. We want to make sure, again, that these kids understand the importance of protecting themselves as they continue to advance in technology. And also from a career perspective and advancement. As I stated before, you know, it's very important. It does not matter what industry that that student is in. It's very important to uh, gain those experiences and those skills um, as they advance in their career. So we want to make sure, again, we're teaching, again, the, the technical skills as well as those soft training skills to help them advance in their career and to make themselves more marketable within their particular career path. And also embracing innovation and creativity. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, one of the things that I, I enjoy and, and love of working with my interns is that they come from a different generation, so their experiences are different. And I love to embrace their innovation because it teaches me. I'm not a big TikToker. But let me tell you something. I learned a lot about TikTok, and my interns have helped this organization advance on TikTok. Why? Because they are learning how to advance in their, or excuse me, embrace their innovation as well as their own creativity. And that is some, some things that we want to make sure we are, are tapping into is what, what is a student's creativity? Because there is a lot of talented um, students, right? There's a lot of intelligent students. I have a five-year-old nephew and I'm like, dude i don't how do you know this like he knows a lot about technology he's very brilliant but again as we continue to see this shift the younger they are i mean they have ipads and phones in front of them at two and three years old so again it's that constant um innovation and learning new things independently that is and that's something that we want to make sure we're tapping into and we are honing into their particular creativity and so forth and also um, from a business standpoint, if you have a business, right? If you have a business, it's very important for you as a business or for those that desire to be a business owner to understand business, business competitiveness, right? We wanna be ahead of the, our competitors. We want to make sure that we are staying on top of technology. I actually attended, I'm not sure if you guys have Heard of the render conference in Atlanta again i'm not in tech space but i attended that conference back in june to learn more about tech and how i can implement that within my own business with empower with words educational services right and again trying to streamline my operational process and making things more efficient for my customers you know this is why it's very important to again go back to continuous learning and staying above um, that competitive advantage when it comes from, again, a business perspective. 
And also, again, when we talk about, you know, not only business as well, but it also from an individual standpoint, right, being more knowledgeable about, about the latest um, softwares and um, industries and, and making yourself more marketable from an individual standpoint. You know, if you decide that, hey, you want to advance your career, again, being more knowledgeable about uh, various softwares and technologies, you know, it makes yourself more competitive in the job market as well. And again, productivity and efficiency, right? We always want to, we always want things to be better. We always want growth. We always want to um, see processes more streamlined. We also want to see things more efficient. We want to see things more automated. Um, and again, this is where uh, getting into the AI um, perspective when it comes to utilizing those tools, right? So again, when we talk about the importance of understanding how to make things more um, um, productive, right? This is where we start to in, in, incorporate artificial intelligence and, and so forth like that, freeing up your time, right? We, we have more time to do things. Um, and again, you know, that, that's very important from, again, a business standpoint and from an individual standpoint. And then also overall growth. We all want growth, we all want expansion. I cannot think of one person that does not want to see progression in some sort, whether it's a progression in your career, whether it's a progression in your education or a progression in a business product or a business service. We all want to see advancement. We all want to see profits. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely want to see profits. You know, that's your livelihood. So it's very important to think about all of these things because, again, it, it it impacts our everyday life and it really impacts you know our overall um success so let's do a recap now for all of my people who are multitasking i hope that you remember some of the things we talked about now can anybody again you can do this through the chat or you can unmute yourself can anybody share with me at least two of the tech shifts or trends that we talked about earlier. Anybody? Anybody in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Like I said, I like um, everyone to talk. To oh, I'm sorry, say again. <laughs> um, when you talked about AI and uh, neuromatic computing absolutely awesome that's right um ai um we have again biotechnology agricultural even green energy technology right there's so many different um again uh, what is it uh, the blockchain that's another example so again there's so many different tech shifts and trends thank you for sharing um you know your um what you got from that now the four strategies four strategies that we talked about all right, this is one of the things that as well I like to call a response type because it kind of sticks with you. So can anybody share with me the first strategy that we talked about? Anybody? Anybody remember? If not, I'll remind you. Strategy one was expose and teach digital literacy. That was strategy number one. Strategy number two, can anybody remember strategy number two? And again, you can put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Everybody's quiet today. You guys ready for lunch? I am between your lunch. Let's get through this. Strategy two, cultivate critical thinking. All right, that was strategy number two. Strategy number three, teach soft skills as well as helping them balance tech, okay? And strategy number four, encourage lifelong learning. Again, that is very important when you're working with your youth is to incorporate these strategies. Again, I believe we have professionals on here, parents, coaches, mentors. Um, again, if you work with youth in some capacity or even if you have your own children, you know, it's very important to implement these strategies um, with, the, with the young people. And then also important, right, why 
are all of these strategies important? And we just talked about this. Why is this important? Anybody want to provide some of their feedback on what they've um, got from this and why it's important to implement these strategies, even for your own self as a professional? Can I'll I get a uh -huh, go ahead. I'll, I'll take the plunge. Sure. Um, I, I think it's important because one, um, we're living in a world now that uh, technology is moving very quickly and mm -hmm. there's a lot of change going on. And so these strategies help with um, dealing with that change in a way that is effective for not just uh, your kids going to school, but also in the professional arena. Absolutely. Was that Robert? I'm trying to see who was speaking. Yes, it was me. Oh, okay, awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that feedback. That is ex absolutely correct. Absolutely. So one of the things that I want to do is give um, individuals opportunities to ask questions. Does anyone have any questions about the information that we went over? Any questions, any thoughts, any comments, or about our organization? Any? any? Until there was a question in the chat earlier uh, from okay. Scott. Uh, says by neuromorphic computing, is that similar to deep learning? It is. It is similar. Yes. And I'm sorry, I missed that question. Thank you, Devin. Any other questions? Um, I do have uh, some questions and, and, and a comment. Sure. Uh, first, uh, great. I'm glad you're working with youth uh, cause, um, and giving them things that they're not getting in school. Uh, <laughs> the, the second question I have is, uh, are you looking for um, help with some of the uh, career coaching and career training because uh, I have somebody that might be a good uh, connection for you. Robert, actually I am and that is something that we can talk offline on. I am because as I am expanding our programs, um, we do have a couple of opportunities that we are working on. So that is definitely a conversation that um, you and I can can have offline. Absolutely. Okay, I'll put my LinkedIn um, in the in the chat. And anybody else that'd like to connect, um, I I love to connect with people and understand what they're doing and tell them what I'm doing. So sounds great, sounds great. And then also too, here's my contact information. And then um, individuals, if you want to just take a, a quick picture, um, you know, this is my website, empowerwithwords.com. If you want to learn a little more information, and then. Uh, email in your questions if there's additional questions. And then also, um, we are on uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Now, I'm, I only manage LinkedIn because that is my professional standpoint. My interns, I'm going to be very honest, I'm not a social media person. I have interns that are operating it. But any, um, you know, if there's a platform that, um, you know, you're on more often, please connect with us. Um, either way, um, you know, you're going to you're going to talk to me. So just uh, reach out in any capacity. Okay. And then Devin, I'll give the floor back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chantel. Um, you know, we are an organization that has a, a laser focus on youth and exposing them to tech um, information, skills, strategies. So um, the information you shared today is absolutely relevant for the work that BDPA does. So thank you, uh, thank you, thank you. I hope everyone took some nuggets away um, and captured your contact information so you can reach out. But definitely, um, if you reach out to Chantel, knock on LinkedIn, um, she is responsive there. So thank you for sharing with us today. Uh, as a reminder, this will be on YouTube after today's talk. So uh, feel free to go out there and, and share this with others who need to see this information. Use it in your own chapters, uh, maybe within your local chapter meetings. Um, there's some things, some nuggets you can take away as you build out your strategies for next year. Um, and you can also visit bdpa.org backslash tech and career talks uh, to see this recording and all of our previous talks. Or you can go to YouTube. Look up National BDPA and all the talks right there on, on our YouTube channel. So thank you all. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you again, Chantel, for sharing with us today. And Power With Words, make sure you check into her organization and support what she has going on. And until next time, stay safe 
and stay blessed. We'll see you soon. Take care, Devin. Bye-bye.